G'day, I'm Scotty. G'day, I'm Becky and welcome back to part three of the making of our chess table. If you haven't checked out part one and two, go and check it out because in part one we made the table motorised and then in part two we've made the chessboard light up. Yeah, and in part three we're going to start off and we're going to actually paint the squares. We were just going to use some paper and diffuse the light with that, but we found even at night it doesn't light up too brightly when the squares are on there. So we figured we'll paint them now because we're going to put some reed switches in them, which will join them all together and then we're not going to have the opportunity to do it later. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy watching part three. Enjoy. Enjoy. We're about to paint and because we've shown you a lot of painting, we're going to make it a little short and sweet. Now it's time to put some sensors into the individual squares on the chessboard and we've got some reed switches here, we've got lots of the reed switches and we've also got diodes as well. Yeah, so a reed switch is a little glass switch that has some metal bits in it and when you put a magnet near it, it will close up and work like a normal push button switch. So we've set up a little test here just to show you it working. We've got a reed switch and an LED light. And if we give that some power and get our little magnet, if you put that near, you can see the magnet is making the light come on. Uh, so that's what we're going to use to censor the chess pieces because each one's going to have a magnet in the base of it. And we've also made here from one of our old test squares, it's a little jig just so I can bend my diodes because they've got to go in the hole in the bottom and out the hole at the top but fit around the middle bit that's holding the reed switch. So this will just help me bend them because I've got to do it 64 times and well, it'll be easier mm. than trying to get it right each time. Beautiful. We're adding the diodes to our reed switches because to have 64 reed switches is going to take a lot of wires if we had a wire going in the in and out of each reed switch. So to make it work we're going to use an array of reed switches. So we'll have eight wires on one side and eight on the other, which will run it all. And you need some diodes because when they're in an array like that, you can get some feedback going the wrong way, giving you false positives. So we'll show you a quick animation of how that can happen. And then we'll start adding them all to the chess squares. We put two chess pieces on the second line. You can see when we put five volts on the top line, none of the reed switches are closed, so it doesn't go to the lights. When we put five on the second line, you go through the closed reed switches, lighting up the lights, and for the last two, they're not closed, so they won't. So if we had two more chess pieces on the top line, we can see the first one works fine, and it goes through the closed ones, but for the second line, the first chess piece will work, the second one works, but feedback goes through the top ones, making it look like the third one was on. So the solution to this is to use some diodes, which will let the current only chuck go in one way. So the first line will work correctly, and then when we get to the second line, we'll go through the first one correctly, and the second one correctly, and when the feedback happens, the diode will stop it going back through the other chess pieces.
Okay, now we've painted the pieces, the wood looks a little bit light, so we've got a stain just to make it nice and dark so it all matches. So we'll give that a go. So we've got that all soldered together now, but we found a bit of a problem. I've attached all the diodes straight through to each other, which in general would be great and save us on wires and things, but forgot about the voltage drop. So each diode loses 0.7 of a volt. So by the time we run through eight, we've lost all the five volts from the Arduino. So we're gonna to have to redo some of them so the diodes don't go through each other and they all just go into a common wire. So we'll give that a go. We have finished soldering all the reed switches and wires. Now we need to run the wires through the hidden grooves we added to the frame earlier. To do this, we'll drill a hole from the inside into the groove for each wire. Off to the drill press. I'm starting some soldering on my Arduino. This one's going to be the one that reads the reed switches. So I've built a little board that can 
hook onto the frame and it's going to sit there and I've just attached a little um, wire harness so we can get it to hook up to the other board later using a clip that will clip on and off to make it quite easy. So I'm just going to do some soldering to hook the wires onto the wire harness that need to go through and out to the other Audrino. So we've run all the wires through the grooves in the wood here and here and I've labelled them all up so I know which wires which and just put a cable tie to hold them down so now we'll put the board back together and then put all the wires into the Audrino. Here's a look at the Arduino program we're going to be using to read the read switches. So we'll use this on the new Arduino we just added and then send a message to the second one to say when a piece is added or removed. So for this we use the wire H protocol with some instructables I found here to do I2C communication. And one of the tricks I use is to use a multi-dimensional array to sort, store the state of the pieces so we can only send the message when a piece is added or removed. So here I define some constants. I've got a structure to send the message. And in the setup, we just set the pin modes for the ranks and the files, initialize everything. And then in our loop, we go through each rank row one at a time, set it to high, and then go through each file column and read the read switch. If it's high, it means there's a magnet on the read switch, meaning there's a piece there. So I can use my multi-dimensional array to see if it was zero before, then there wasn't a piece, and now there is. So we'll set it to one and Call my function to send a message to say a piece has been added. Otherwise, we look at the array and if it was one, meaning there was a piece there and it's now zero, we set it to zero and I send through my function the piece remove message. So here's a look at the sending message function. So I've written some simple tables here to show the different states. So the first one is the LED numbers because for that we zigzag back and forth the LEDs. The second one is the ranks and files as they appear on a normal chessboard. And the third one is the rank and file for where each read switch is going up and down the board. So we look at the current rank and file that has been sent to the message and convert the rank into the actual LED number. So from this table to this one. And then using the wire protocol, we send the message through to the second Audrino.
We've put the Arduino in now and hooked the wires up and we've got a second Arduino down here and hooked them up and this one has a sketch on it so as the reed switches go on and off we'll actually light up the chest squares to show where the pieces are or were. Excellent, well I think it's time to test it out. We'll plug in. So when we put the piece on the square should go blue to show it's detected a piece and when we take it off it goes green to show a piece was removed. After that's going to come the tricky part where we're going to have to write that into the chess program to make that actually do chess moves. So that's actually censoring it really good. That's excellent. That wraps up part three. In part two we mentioned we might look at the computer program that's going to run the chess engine for the chess table but we've run out of time for that so we'll add that into the next video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the other part one and two if you haven't seen them yet. And we'll see you in the next part, part four. Yeah. Bye. Bye. No, where? I've forgotten the whole thing. We're about to paint. Oh, we're the about to paint. paint. Okay, yep, we're about to paint. Ready? Yep. Yeah, we're recording. Yeah. So, are you going to do in this part we're doing, or am I doing it? Yeah, because I don't even know what we're doing in this part. Headshot, what are we doing? Just looking at it? Or? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Alright. Okay, so Got the table okay. to. Move. I'm able to move. <laughs> so what am, I'm saying that or you are? I am, wasn't I? Oh, okay. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be another half an hour. Yep. <laughs>